All right, guys. Well, welcome, travelers, to the Shroud of Malice, uh, our weekly Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition homebrew campaign written by me. I am the greatest dungeon master in all the land, and if you don't believe me, just ask me. I'll tell you again. Uh, Just ask me. (laughs) So playing with me tonight is a group of my closest family and friends, and friends of friends. Who's who? We'll figure that out later. Uh, some of us have years of experience playing D&D, while others are rather new to the hobby. So if your home groups are anything like us, I promise there'll be something to entertain you this evening. Uh, if you are enjoying our content on YouTube, please like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment below, citing your favorite moment from tonight's episode. Or however it breaks out. Whatever. Uh, really love to hear from you. So with that said, we invite you to join us and help us push back the shadows encroaching upon the land of Fairmorn. Welcome to Fairmorn, an island of breathtaking landscapes and immersing culture. For centuries it has been a destination for travelers, merchants, and adventurers. Many come to scale the snow-capped peaks surrounding Shiva Vale, dance with the magical hands at the Bittermuse Tavern in Zestero, tame one of the wild horses roaming the plains of Ella Point. Seek enlightenment from an ancient one in Dragonspire, or try to slay the beast roaming the hills near Colt's Gavern. Whatever their reason, the light of Fairmorn drew them in. However, no light shines forever. Over thirty years ago, a shade encroached upon Fairmorn, the result of the vile workings of Bryce's Kadim. He mastered the forbidden art of anti-luminescence, gloom magic. Those disciplined in the art are nearly unrivaled in ability. The shadows are their ally. They hear every whisper, see every action, touch every object. However, Bryce's schemes did not go unnoticed. He drew the attention of the formidable Mage Guild, but despite their best efforts, they could not defeat him alone. They sought a rare alliance with the Paladin Order. Desiring to vanquish evil from all realms, the Paladins eagerly agreed. They sent a champion of Lothander to confront Bryce's face to face. Wielding the power of a god, the holy warrior Istavar defeated the Dark One. Bryce's soul was then cast into the abyss, his body imprisoned in a crypt beyond the mortal realm. Though Bryce's presence has been removed, his influence remains. Successors, cultists, and even imitations now dwell in the shadows. If we fail to push back the darkness now, we risk being consumed by the Shroud of Malice. So with that said, players, would you please introduce yourselves? Yeah, uh, hi, my name is Nate. I play Marcus. He's a paladin of the Oath of Glory. Uh, Joe just talked about the shadows encroaching. When the shadows are encroaching, you don't know what to do. I'm your hero, baby. Mm. Very good. And I have a less generic name than Jance. Oh. Woo! <laughs> 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 Then trying to shoot, so trying I, to shoot, trying to shoot shots, <laughs> make shots. Go by. <laughs> gotcha. Here again today with some more super cool fun stuff in the game Dungeons and Dragons. Thanks so much for coming to hang out today, guys. I really do appreciate it. And I'll be playing. If you wear Glowfall, a fifth level Twilight Cleric, Furbolg of the Long Wilds. Hello, nice. I'm Michelle, and I play Catristia, a human sorceress, and. I'm going to do some fireballing today. I think. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Jake, playing Ithmar. He is a level 5 half-elf rogue, a.k.a. the Terror of the Two Tones, a.k.a. Death's Shadow, a.k.a. the Friend of Helm. Let's go! At your service. <laughs> That's going to be all listed on your tombstone by the end of the session. Oh. <laughs> it's going to be small. <laughs> oh, wait, what? Um, I'm Allison I play Nova she is a level 5 what else Um, I really like Taco Bell Mm, we established that a few minutes ago and now I just keep thinking about it Mm. so yeah let's play our session shot (laughs) (laughs) oh man Baylor Jack your resident spoony bard reminding you that there's nothing to fear except fear itself which would be reassuring if it wasn't Everywhere! Wow. <laughs> Somebody just got back from a acting class or something. Don't worry, like Marcus has you. Bell. Come on, go, come go. on, buddy. Bring it in. Bring it in. That's what it is. It's a lack of Taco Bell that's bringing up that angst. 
Yeah, it's I feel it. Or it's too much Taco Bell. Oh, it could be. No, like that's that. not it. Definitely not it. Not possible. Uh, I, <laughs> listen, you could always call off work and say, listen, I just had Taco Bell for dinner. I won't be in today. Sorry. Uh, you, all right. Well, thank you. What? And you won't get in trouble. Go ahead. They'll be like, uh, no, 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 no. No, because no one will ask you about it either. they just like, why would you do that to yourself? Like, you didn't have to. Uh, all right. So thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, let's get into this. Let's play some D&D. So last time uh, we had a previous session. And due to technical reasons, we were not able to post it on YouTube, which is forever going to be known as the lost episode from here on out so <laughs> during the lost episode some things took place um scary things everyone overcame those challenges and finally worked their way back to the adventures guild now it's important to know from the last time that we were on youtube about two months have passed in that time frame our wonderful heroes have journeyed around the city of breckenfell Finding clues, learning information, uncovering the mysteries of their past, and learning the secrets of their future. Some of them have went on by themselves, while others have partied and uh, grouped with certain <laughs> friends within uh, within TBD. Um, some adventures even took place outside of Breckenfell. Perhaps we'll learn a little bit more about that this evening. So with that said, let's bring our attention to TBD tonight at the Adventures Guild. Everyone has come back from their day of adventuring. It is about 5 p.m. tonight. Meals are being served. The crowd around you is pretty quiet this evening. The lockdowns around Breckenfell have kind of really stabilized the adventure skill. Not as much activity as usual. Things have been fairly quiet. So, it's kind of a solemn evening tonight. I bring your attention to the party sitting here. We have Katristia and Maylor across from each other small talk Nova to the left of Katristia Marcus looking around the room for things to lift and carry trying to find what beast he would have slain from the animals heads <laughs> adorning the walls and Ithmar and Fewer having a quiet moment at a separate table party where shall we begin tonight are you feeling Nova? Pretty good. That's good. Consider you almost died. Well... Wait. What do you mean you almost died? It was terrible. What happened? It's been weeks. I'm sorry. I haven't had a chance to catch up yet. You can't just walk away from a fight. <laughs> Who it's messed really with you? I'll take care of him. <laughs> No, you will. <laughs> I'm messing with my friend. That would be great. Chuck will give Katristi a knowing look. Oh, there's something you're not telling me. Come on. Spit it out. If you must know, Caladon was very close to killing me. Our dragon I thought we talked about this. Not a friend after all. He's really not a friend at all. He's a really... Horrible person. Dragon? What did you find out? Person. He's a what did super you do? bad paladin. Well, that's not good. Paladins are supposed to be good, not bad. See, I was taught that in school. Well, that's what I heard, too. I mean, we certainly got a chance to know him better. And let me tell you, Brassus Kadim is like his hero. Like... Do you have any evidence? Yeah, for the fact oh, that he oh tried to support this. us. You're, you're saying you that a liar? Oh my! I no, so we can take him down. Well, he almost killed Nova, so that's evidence like one. Um, I think Maylor still has a note from his underground secret ring that he's trying to recruit these weirdo children to scribe something. So that's true. That's so evidence. That's true. So yes. So the uh, easy answer is you have evidence. No. Oh Listen, my. he's a man of the like church. Catching up. Maybe we should join him. <laughs> and we get a little bit heated and loud and you start picking up the conversation. So if how did you get in this situation? 
How did what? How Perhaps did you get in a situation where you count on almost killed you? But I mean, well, that's not the point. But I mean, whatever. It, it, well, isn't it? We happen to all be in the same place, and <laughs> oh. we just started having a conversation. <laughs> and we just he has the mirror. How did he get that back, Marcus? He's a bad right. person. We don't know where Reginald is. Or Quest. Oh, no. Or even if they're okay. He implied that they were dead. Oh, that's terrible. Is that terrible. what he implied? I didn't catch that. Wait, where did you... You said you were in the same spot. Right. Where? We just... In the Arcane in... District, right? Yeah. This is the building. I start describing building. exactly what the building is and what it looks like. Yeah, and you recall it to be the Scribes Guild. Yeah. Scribes Guild. Yeah. Oh my and goodness. So why did you seek him out? To see if he was evil. And then he he, he gave us a right proper evil monologue, just like a proper villain. Mm -hmm. Told us oh, his plans like and everything. Yeah. He did all of the proper villain things. Villains like to do that. So you did your did you evil, evil smell thing, you'd be able to smell his taint. <laughs> You could Whoa. probably still smell it on me. Whoa. I detected That's how you almost killed her. <laughs> I use my divine sense. <laughs> nope. okay. You don't smell his evil taint. <laughs> yeah, actually, kind of. <laughs> no. So, actually, Marcus, here's you... probably music. <laughs> I mean, I did shower. You said he almost killed you. Does that mean that you yeah. killed him? I think technically he did kill oh. her. No, he's Wait. alive. What? He is very strong. I think we need to kill him then. Oh, and I got something and I run upstairs. Okay. But wait. Oh. I'm very confused. I think he's he just wants a toy with us some more. That's why he let us go. Well, I'm glad to hear that you're okay. Um, I'm very concerned at the fact that he had the mirror back. Me too. And he was just all like, uh, and look, I got the mirror back. Uh, uh, uh. Where is he now? Do you know? No, he left. Mm -mm. Did he I have any guard city. with him? He had two guards. He had some guards. He didn't happen to be heading north, did he? He didn't stay. We ran out of the Scribes Guild. I mean, they kind of carried so, me out, but... Did he let you flee, then? I'm confused on how this wasn't a death to th or a battle to the death, in this case. Well, where that big strange. hammer so lands evil. on the table in front of me. Oh, I see? It. <laughs> big hammer. He's got a souvenir. Is that... Is that Wait, whose hammer, hammer is this? One of his minions. Yes, it's about twice the size of Maylor's normal hammer. Holding it, it's about 40 pounds in weight. Very ornate. Similar to my mall. Symbols of light on it. You see expressions of Lothander drawn all over, etched into its shaft and into its head. Marcus, Hold does this look familiar to you? Well, yes, I mean... It's definitely a, a tool meant to be used for good. I mean, that's the symbol of Lothander. He's one of the great gods, one of the great good gods in the deities. It was glowing and, were, and stuff say, when they were using it, but I couldn't get it to glow, so you can have it. <laughs> I think I broke it. Let me look at Let me take a look at it. And sure. I'd be inspecting well, for uh, knowledge as well as magic. With tech magic. Okay. Roll an investigation check. But I'm really bad at that. <laughs> Two. Well, you cast a spell, right? Ask he did. Shall receive. I'm, I'm looking at whatever additional details that are going to pop out for him. Um, as you're yeah, looking at it, there's like nothing. This. Okay, go ahead. No, there's nothing about it that looks more familiar to you than any other weapon. You recognize it to be one 
that would be held by a higher level of the clergy or at least their guard um however you do detect that it is magical and it does emanate some aspects of radiant uh, <coughs> essence to it. it does have a radiance to it perhaps we could have someone of the arcane identify it for us and what type of enchantments or blessings are upon this thing So what else did Caladon tell y'all of note? He said Reginald's dead? He didn't say Reginald was dead. Oh. But you but said he had the mirror, so... How else does, does he have that. the mirror? I don't think you would have just yeah. given it to him. Could it be the only mirror? Uh, Katristia, roll a history check. I was going to ask if I can roll like Arcane or something. Can I do Arcane? And Arcana? Mm -hmm. Plus four? In regards to the hammer, yeah. Uh, if you're investigating it, sure. Yeah. You can make an arcana check while yeah. that's going on. Hey. Oh. You. Yeah. I created it. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that you're actually the one that created this. You <laughs> forgot about that. And you see you when I head at the bottom. Towards this. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, you investigated so good it duplicates, and now there's two of them. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she tells Marcus that it's very similar to the mall that he carries, except it will do, mechanically speaking, plus two radiant damage per hit. Oh. You definitely want this, Marcus. I definitely want that. Yes. It's a two-handed ball. So Marcus grabs Marcus. both of them. I wonder if I could swing both at the same time. <laughs> mm, like it. That bacon strength. Nice. <laughs> and uh, why are you of... thinking and investigating that, uh, Katristia, roll a history check. Uh, we that there's you were more left than one mirror, you. right? There is more than one mirror, that's correct. Reginald told Yoga? Katristia and I that there was more than one. Do you think he tricked us? Just to get uh, under our skin? He wants well, us to lead him to him. Ooh, I like that, Naylor. Maybe. Reginald's had Quespa written on it. Did you get to see if it had that? No, he just we showed didn't get right. a good look at the handle. That's right. Hmm. Perhaps he clearly trapped. wasn't showing all of his cards any of the time we were together. Well, this whole thing is bigger than I think we understood. It's a, it's a big meeting. It's a big meeting. Caladon is state, bad, so. just like I thought he was. <laughs> and we, I'm glad you guys discovered that. And I apologize for any doubt I showed. You had to understand that I've, I've been trained and taught to to trust those in power in the cloth. Even trust when they have a, the church. Even, even when they have a tail. Mm. <laughs> tail evil. Well, I think since we don't I know, I'm learning that those with tails are evil. Yeah. I mean, since we can't understand who's like good or bad, maybe we should just kill everybody that doesn't do what we say. I, mm. I don't think yes. that's the direction I would take this. Um, no. Seems simpler, but that's me. Well, well, we could start with at least maybe people with tails. Okay. Maybe tails first. Does anyone maybe have an axe? Stink. Friends. No. Let me it's... tell you, those tails are hard to cut off. <laughs> You tried to cut oh, his tail off? cut his tail off? Oh, she got Maybe. so close to... Well, we also ran into um, some unfavorable um, interactions with yes. those hotels in our uh, time away. What happened? I thought that um, coming, coming back to the uh, Adventurer's Guild would bring some amount of solace, but we come back to hear that things are worse than, we, than when we left them with Caledon. Time out. This guy at the top of our, our table, who is that? And is he still standing there <laughs> listening to us? Is that, uh, that is the barmaid. He's been sitting there waiting for you guys. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I stood like on some... top of him because. Would you, would you guys like something to, to drink? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just looked up like, wait, there's an extra guy. <laughs> <laughs> an extra person. He's just sitting there. 
<laughs> he just agreeing with everybody. Yeah, it tells. <laughs> <Stingers story. laughs> Can't Absolutely. trust him. The problem was the count was right because Fuera was underneath him. <laughs> I thought uh, Rainy Moore had a really bad trip, the bartender. I look at the barman and I order a hot tea. Ah, yeah, hot tea. I'd be more than happy to get that for you. Um, seems like you guys had yourselves a nice adventure, didn't you? Um, uh, never did like Head Justice Caledon myself. So, good to see he's about to get some comeuppance around here. Uh, hot tea, anyone else need something? You know he's I'd got like a pale. large glass of milk, please. Uh, Something really strong. I think that'd be fun. Um, no, okay. st strong milk is bad, Catricia. You don't want that. <laughs> Just the stuff they say that gets you all crazy. That's what I want. I'm uh, more than happy. I know exactly what you need. And how about you over there, Miss Harden? I'm good. Uh, <laughs> Just water for you. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. No problem. I'll take your water <laughs> as well, my friend. Water for you too. Not a problem. And there. the same. Uh, uh, three waters. We need a tea. We need something really strong and a big milk. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll be right back. Thank you. Hey. Great story. Can't wait to hear the end of it. And then uh, he steps away. I lean over a few air and I'm like. Is it just me or is Catristi a little more aggressive since we've left? Arr, gotta get things going. Hmm. Maybe it's the she wild me magic. Almost die. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear that. Arr, mm, mm. <laughs> uh, Maylor, roll, Maylor, roll a history check for me. Sixteen. Okay. You recall a few more details of that conversation with. Caledon. Do you wish to share in any of that with the party? Every bit of it. Okay. You recall Justice Caledon talking about how Reginald was sent for re-education. Oh, that's right. Yes. You share the tale of how Caledon sees the evil and corruption infecting Breckenfeld. How he views it as something that needs to be destroyed. And he is going to be the one that liberates Fairmore from this corruption. Bryce's ideals were strong and pure and true, according to his view. And someone needs to exact justice. Caledon alluded to the fact that he has set a few things in motion. That will graze Breckenfell. Destroy Breckenfell, eliminate that which is around Fairmore, and perhaps maybe the gods themselves will build it up in a brand new way. I look right at Ithamar when I say he wants to destroy the city. Hmm. Well, that's unfortunate. He wouldn't have been the first to try this. What's the value in destroying the city? He feels it needs to be cleansed. Destroy it all, rebuild it from scratch in his image. Uh, the greatest good, according to him. Well, oh I don't agree gosh. with his method, self... but there is a cleansing that needs to be done. Starting with uh, him, but he He's the most dangerous sort of clergy, Marcus. He's the self-righteous I sort. completely agree. That's why what he calls it. And that he needs a rebirth. Mm. It doesn't need a cleansing. His words were a calling. Calling. Uh, this city whom? doesn't need to be destroyed to be reborn. Nova, you're lost in thought for a moment. Um, water is for you. And water is for you. And water is for you. Thank you. Tea, sir? Milk? And young lady, this is the strongest thing we have. Ooh, drink. He brings it out, and it's a <laughs> little tiny cup. About this big. Shot glass sized. I suggest you drink it slow. I already shot it, I'm sorry. 
Oh. <laughs> oh <no. laughs> he holds back. I need you to roll a constitution saving throw. It's got awful. It's going to be oh, it hurts. An 18. It hurts. It burns. It burns. Oh, I'm so Katristia, as you no, the the DC was set at eighteen. Oh my! As you Strong you stuff. sit back and you drink, <laughs> it does burn going down. It tastes like just gasoline as you're drinking oh. it. Uh, you allow it to set for a moment. You kind of you see Katristia go silent. Look around the room. Waver a little bit. And just projectile vomit. Oh. <laughs> In what direction? Oh, May War, he's a crap for me. Michelle, roll a, roll a D4. Oh, no. <laughs> it's Mars quick on his feet. No. Rolling good tonight. <laughs> that way. Right across this. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, Maylor, you can roll a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> Oh my gosh, <laughs> Maylor, you just narrowly escape this, and Katristia, you just feel your head hit the table, vomit now down on your your chin, uh, your hair kind of now draped in what's sitting on the table. The smell of just rancid drink, you mm. know, kind of coming up. Um, some pocket bacon mixed in, all of that aroma, yeah. and. It, she is feeling like maybe she needs to call it a night. <laughs> but maybe not. Maybe she wants another. <laughs> what do you do, Katristia? I want to... I Water. Yeah. I'm going to slide my water so. cup down to her. <laughs> I give her, I give her my water, and I'm like, I've lost my appetite. <laughs> I look at Fruware, and I say, was that the wild magic? <laughs> it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. And I'll Marcus will pump five points of uh, lay on hands into her to remove poison out of her system. Okay. Uh Katristia, you That's feel so yourself good. as Marcus kinda comes over, puts his hand on you and gives you some reassurance. Just a few moments later, you feel the fog evaporate, uh your mind begins to clear, your stomach stops twisting and turning. And you feel more normal. You have another vision? No, don't don't drink that. No. Yeah, that one's called Gooseneck. You sure you don't want more? No. <laughs> are, are you sure you didn't give her poison? <laughs> oh, I pull out my rapier. Are you trying to kill her friend? He backs up. He's like, please, please. She wanted the strongest we got. I honored the lady's wishes. She got the strongest we got. Maybe next time she's going like, wiser. Do I need to kill him? <laughs> Looking at Fruer and Marcus for guidance here. <laughs> no, no, we, we we don't need to kill this one. I, I really think, I think we just had a, asked to do. Yeah, simply a misunderstanding. Plus, he doesn't have a tail. <laughs> I lift up and his coat and clean check. up all this vomit. <laughs> I lift up his coat and I check for a tail. <laughs> <laughs> You have Carol show up at the table after the gentleman waves her over. She just kind of smiles and puts her hand on uh, Katristi. Uh, perhaps, uh, perhaps you should go upstairs. Well, she should be. <laughs> she should be fine now. I'm talking to my friend. <laughs> okay. Okay. Just give me a biscuit. Any moment, the uh, it should leave her system. There should be no worries. 30 seconds later, two more people come over with a mop bucket. They start kind of cleaning up a little bit what's on the floor. Yeah, why don't line. we move to this table? It's All empty. The Just ahead of us. <laughs> <laughs> the party relocates. So, I put my rapier away there. and I whisper to the barman, can I get another tea? <laughs> As I look uh, at my no. cup, surrounded by vomit sitting on the table in front of me. Uh, no. <laughs> I'd have the barman and say... Sorry for the mess. Thank you for what you've done and hand them three gold. Oh. Okay. Very kind, very kind. Like, appreciate that. Well, the people I see drink it seem happy. I don't know. Hmm. Well, <laughs> Maybe drink it more slowly next time. 
Or not at all. It's an illusion. <laughs> Stay away. It's poison. Frank's recommended I drink more tea, so we're going to try It really that. is. It so, really is poison. We had begun to mention, um, Ithamar did, that we also um, had an adventure into the north as we found a cave that um, it's much bigger than we anticipated. And it seems that it may be in line with the greater evil that we're dealing with. Perhaps there's, there's no way to know unless we go back. Um, well, there were things with tails. There definitely were things with tails and we definitely killed them. Um, not to say there's a direct correlation and I do not in any way, uh, advise that we kill everything with a tell <laughs> and I looked at Tristia and I certainly don't advise that we kill anything that doesn't agree with us Miss Katristia I mean that, then you're like Caledon right we'll see we'll wants see. to kill he those kill who us? don't agree with him why didn't so, he kill also, them? So, what, I, I, that's the well, I'm the very concerned about that as right. well uh, there's a there's either cognitive dissonance or there's malevolence which is it that's a big word. I don't know what that means. Is he good or he, bad? Is he evil I for the sake of evil, evil wishing that. evil, or does he think his motivations are good and his actions don't back that up? So the question is, perhaps if that's the case, which it certainly sounds as like it is, he's once again let you go, it sounds like. I still don't have the full story. It seems like you... And if you are getting a little frustrated at this point... um, because he feels like he's not getting a straight answer, right? I look for and where right now, and I say he believes what he's doing is right. Oh. That doesn't make it right. I agree. And I just kind of but muse out loud. But but does that make it wrong? In a just a thoughtful objectivity. Hmm. If loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. <laughs> Marcus uh, whispers over to Ithamar, I, I cure her of the drunkenness. I don't know why she's still drunk. <laughs> yeah, why are you still a character? I'm the dude playing the dude playing the other dude. <laughs> Nova, uh, roll a history check. Uh, while Nova is rolling a history check, Fewer. 19. Um, 19, geez. Fewer, you're trying as best as you can to piece some of these stories together. What the adventure is that you guys were on, everything that it, Caledon is invested in, and desperately trying to figure out if there's a connection between them, uh, yet nothing is concrete in your mind. Nova, you also recall additional details that Maylor did not bring up earlier. Are you going to hold on to that, or are you going to share that with a group? No, I will share it all. You recall conversations about the bride, your sister. How the sister is connected to the snake. You also recall that uh, Caledon is the one that performed the ceremony. Oh. And... It, there is a relationship between Caledon and the snake. You share that Caledon doesn't necessarily, uh, he's not subservient to the snake. He looks at the snake as if he is a tool. And there is something that the snake is doing that serves Caledon in some way. Well, it sure sounds like uh, we take out the snake. We hurt Caldon as well. Why go for the pawn when you can go for the king? Well, we know where one is. We don't know where the other is. Do we know? Yes, we know which one is the pawn and part. which one is the king there, Fewer. Well, it sounds... Let's kill them both. From... Well, or I we could... With you, Patricia. We could try to negotiate or change his mind. It's always an option. It sounds as if he's just misguided. The snake or Caledon? I don't think there's your... a lot of change in Caledon's mind. Well, from hmm. Nova's description of Caledon 
remarks, it sounds as if he's the big player here and the snake is just an instrument to his larger scheme. Yeah. We get to so the through the snake. Necessarily. If, he's if the Kaladon is the major player and the snake is the pawn, well, who sent the snake would be my question. Well, I would guess it'd be Kaladon. I don't Sounds think like Kaladon confusing. sent him. I think it's just a convenient. Yeah, I just think they're path. wicked bedfellows, and they're it's a it's a relationship out of convenience. Ah. So we got. I think it's hmm. two evils, and they're just benefiting from each other, so they haven't taken each other out yet. Nice. Make us a meeting in two days. Is a meeting? Yes. He's got a meeting. Maylor, say say that again. The snake has a meeting in two days. Where very at? public, very public secret meeting at the arena. <laughs> well, hmm. How did you find this information? We've been busy. Audrey helped. Indeed, you have. <laughs> oh, Audrey. Aud- Audrey. I'm glad she was able to point you towards her murderer. <laughs> yeah, she kind of we'll got us under this mess, vengeance. too. You know what was Audrey that introduced your sister to the snake? I do. Hmm. It does seem like the snake needs to face justice. But there's a lot of that needs to go around, it seems like. Well, we encountered a group of people that were taking, apparently, people with arcane ability into this cave for some reason. We uh, were able to intercept them. Um, They were large, very large, bigger than me, uh, suits of armor. There were four of them, and then there was this dwarf looking creature and they had uh, bound a young lady and were taking her to this cave. Anyways, so we we prevented that from occurring and proceeded into the cave and we only made it into the first area which was being guarded by a very fort- formative foe uh, who we ultimately had to kill. He was not willing to offer any information despite his request for parlay. He too was a dragon. Mm. And he, his little minion almost killed me. Fuer. <laughs> it make me sad. No, no. For, for, he's still here. He's still here. He's still here. He's still here. If only barely. Nova. Uh, these dragon like kin are not to be trifled with. <laughs> it's harder Seems to kill like- a hero than that. Here's my biggest concern. If we have two days, is that sufficient enough time to get to knock and inquire about Reginald at his uncle's place? I don't think we can go there right now. No. I'm Why deeply not? concerned about our ally, our friend. Yeah. If I remember, well, I, I think he said it. a three day travel to knock. Also right, concerned. Yeah. I also fear for his safety and wouldn't ever want to lead Caledon there. And a Cal- Caledon apparently keeps tabs, at least on a few of us, because he knows where we are way too often. He has eyes everywhere. How did you find him? Or did he find you? Well, we found him by showing up to a meeting. I pull out the uh, invitation and put it on the mm. table. <clears throat> I'll read it. Was that Audrey's uh, clue that she left you? Or is this something totally unrelated, Mabel? Katristia found this one. Um. Mm -hmm. I made a friend. I forget his name, though. Bob? It was something simple. I'm not helping with this one. (laughs) 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 Was it Peter? We met a Peter. The... Poor fella. He did meet a Peter. We he weren't able to someone dear to him. Yeah. We, were, we weren't able to save his friend. It was too late. 
Oh. No, I think it was. Oh, John. Was it John? I think it was John. John. Is he in the city? I'm not helping. <laughs> it, it's more entertaining for me that you might know or you might not. That's. <laughs> Brandon. But he was Brandon? super nice. Yeah. Is is it he Jance? Needs to be a scribe. <laughs> no, that's odd. That's an odd name. That's that too plain a name. <laughs> <laughs> way, way too plain. <laughs> so, Fuer. Yeah, if you would like to read the note, by the way. It's an invitation to a, a private calligraphy scribe meeting. Writing meeting? That sounds terrible. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, Kalendon is having them write up all these gripey stuff and evilness. Oh. Mm. He's teaching children. When does mm. this take place? At night. Uh, Nothing good night? happens after midnight. I, I've been told that. Mm -hmm. Go home. Why don't we elevate this to the cool. governor? Why don't we let him know that his city is in imminent danger? I bet he's in on it. I you would imagine to so too. The justice is <clears throat> in on it. Well, but then if that's the case, we, then he's the head. Why don't we keep him informed as, through the guild? With the and way as we've that already the mentioned, guild leader responded. I don't think they care either. Rock's a great ally. What was that, Ithamar? Just we have to assume though that Kaladon already knows what we're doing here, or that we are here. We have to assume that he has eyes on this place, so we need to be wary of the the steps that we take, as not to bring harm to any of our friends or allies. So he's he's obviously a very intelligent individual and very dangerous. So we have to proceed with extreme caution. Can we trust so Can we trust the guild leader? Absolutely. No, no way. So. Trust no one. Like oh, her. Who is she? She's been eyeballing me this whole time. I stand who, up who? and pull my who? rapier. <laughs> no, no. You're talking no, about Sparrow on, on. sitting Man, behind you guys? <laughs> We're getting really nervous now. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's dying. Listen, let's call everyone. Let's, let's calm down. Let's calm down. As you, okay. as you turn around, you look, you see this red uh, cloaked woman white hair kind of poking out she's sitting there one leg over the other kind of off to the side uh flipping through reading a book the entire time <laughs> totally not paying attention <laughs> visibly to anything that's going oh, on she's listening i know it i sit down slowly and sip my tea make a little face then kind of reach over and grab marcus's milk and dip a little bit into my tea and then continue to drink it <laughs> Ithamar backs up to a wall so he can see everything and everybody and pulls his blades out because he's super <laughs> skittish. <laughs> okay. Uh, roll. A little trigger happy. I want you to roll an inside check with disadvantage. Oh. Who do you want to roll that? Ithamar. Mm. Oh, too bad you had disadvantage. Your paranoia doesn't leave you. Everything around you looks suspicious, except there's nothing threatening around you. You just assume that there is. Mm. I don't. I don't feel like Throck is in any way evil. He only does upright things, and not only that, he sent us off with such a um in such a way that just he really expects us to be the answer to the greater problems now i could be deceived but i like to think that i'm a good judge of character as i look around this table of newfound friends i see that you know there is plenty of people to be trusted and i'm not saying i trust caladon he tried to kill you. I'd certainly like to know more details. I feel like we're a bit sketchy on the on the details there, but for now, he is a foe, and we should certainly deal with that. So, 
Should we attend this meeting? Is that the is that our next move? Well, I was thinking about the concern about Reginald and the concern to kind of so we can move on knowing that he's safe or that he's in a good spot or just to know that he may be in greater danger than we thought. The clerics of Valor Point used to be able to do the spell where they could talk to someone at great distances and they could respond to you. Mm -hmm. Is, are you able to do something like that for her? Um, I can. It I've might not be done worth it. Just, but maybe worth trying, worth doing that, because obviously traveling there and back takes great time. <clears throat> this is something oh, that you've saying, done just since you know him. If the bar is over there twirling too. his knives, I'm oh, sorry. No, you're good. He, he's twirling his lives. Just he's very vigilant, and he looks at Marcus. He goes, "Can these messages be intercepted?" <laughs> mm, well, nice. I don't think Marcus would know that. <laughs> like, I don't. Like, I don't <laughs> the know. Answer is no. I mean, it's not something I can do. So I don't, it's not something that I'm trained in. But I wouldn't think so. I mean, I don't know how the magic works or how the power works. Yeah, you, you are, when you're, you know. Yeah, few air. I would have to do would a bit have? of study to confirm. Honestly, the only person here, and I'm, this is a little bit slightly meta, I think so Maylor or Contristia might be the only ones that Maylor has half proficiency in Arcana. And my, well, I would say my messages can't be intercepted, but they can't travel that kind of distance. Well, no, I, I have a spell that specifically does that. I I read it the other day and I don't remember the details, but I'll refer back to Well, I, mean, I know it's a pretty powerful spell. It is. Well, if we could if we could guarantee the safety of our friend that they wouldn't be able to identify him or his location or glean any information from such a spell, I would say it's it's very reasonable to do to use that spell, but otherwise I would say no. Just to confirm, you're talking about speaking with Reginald, right? Yes. I am, yes. All right. Allow me, down. allow me a minute. I'm going to retreat to the room. And I am, yes. Room. As you are stepping out into the hallway, if you were, you see Throck walking through on his way out to the, uh, the main... Oh. And he stops his. Ah, few air. And seen you for a few weeks. How things been going, my boy? Oh, As good he's day. Looking good up master. at you and he's <laughs> trying really hard. I'll place my yeah. left hand I, on his shoulder. Do I hear them talking? Uh, yeah, yeah it's not quite. Even vaguely, I don't need to even hear what they say because I'm going to give it some more look like you need to check on that. Oh, yeah, because I've been yeah. pacing back and forth since um, since yeah. I got real paranoid. Okay. And so I'm I'm going to make my way to this corner. I says he walks by. I say, keep him quiet. There are ears everywhere. Oh, did you message that? Yes. Okay. Oh. <laughs> and as I'm to as me? I'm walking by, I just I pat him. No, it's the more as it's more kind of approaches the corner to look in on you. So I kind of meander. Um, as inconspicuous as possible to get a better vantage point to hear um, mm. without being noticed. Hmm. So, so as I was saying, I placed my left hand, non-dominant hand, on his shoulder in a warm greeting. Ah, uh, Throck, Short Strider, well met, sir. Good to see you again. It's good to find you alive and well, I hope. Ah, very well. You, uh, you and your party, and he kind of looks out and he's you know, he steps over, gets a little bit closer. He sees, uh, he doesn't notice Ithamar there because Ithamar's on the opposite side. And he looks over and he sees the bulk of your party and he's like, Good, TBDs, return to the guild. Thought you guys would be out doing some heroing. Are you staying here tonight? M uh, most likely, yes, sir. We've. We've just come back in, actually. We have been doing a bit of uh, heroing as it is, as it were. More to do, as you can imagine. It never ends, right? And 
I'll nod to Ithamar and kind of beckon him over if he wishes. Are you following uh, Ithamar? Yeah, I break cover and I just kind of step out to try to be normal, but still vigilant. Yeah, walk casually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, hello, Ithamar. hello, Throck. How are you, sir? Great. Good, young man. Uh, since you guys are staying here, the the party suites open tonight. Is that where you're going to be staying? You're welcome to use it if you'd like to stay in the same room this evening. Wait, what is it? The what, party yeah, suite? Yeah. Yes. You guys right. haven't stayed in the party suite yet. It's got a nice little living area, kitchenette, couple of rooms, plenty for all of you. We need to protect each other. We should stay together. Are you messaging that or are you saying that out loud? <laughs> I say it out loud. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, that's not a bad idea, Miller. Why, why do you think that? <coughs> it's very kind of you, Throck. Hmm. Heroing to do. My boys, heroin to do. And you see Throck <laughs> just, Pat, just keep walking away. He's you said obviously her going. Heroin to do. Heroin to do, guys. <laughs> heroin to do. <laughs> uh, plenty of heroin around the corner. Catristi is like, is that stronger than Gooseneck? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, right? <laughs> so... Um, it it came to me as I was speaking with Throck, which, by the way, we have an open invitation to the party, whatever you called it. Uh, party room. suite. Party suite, yeah. <laughs> and I actually do recall uh, most of what it, the uh, ability to, to speak at a distance that, uh, that Marcus had mentioned. Uh, it's not available to me at the mo at the moment, but it would be in the morning. So essentially, I'll okay. be able to speak a short message um, to someone I'm familiar with, in this case, Reginald. Um, and it would be completely in his mind. And they could be, he would be able to answer me. So I think it would be safe to answer your question. If Mark. Only he would hear it. Good. Well, <clears throat> I know it would relieve a lot of our minds if we knew that he was all right. And that might Absolutely. even answer the question about about Caledon, how much he knows about, or is he feigning the fact that he has done something to Reginald, and he's just trying to use us to get to him? Marcus, very good thought, sir. So, is it what time is it right now? By the way, uh, you guys been talking. It's probably about nine o'clock or so. Last four hours, you've had drinks come and go. People have come, stepped in, stepped out, passed you by. Have I settled down a little bit yet? Can or is he is Ithamar still kind of ramped up? Roll a uh, charisma check. Okay. Um, based on what you've seen around, there's been no real threat to kind of put you in a position to be intimidated in some way or trepidatious in some way. Um, you're still watching on edge, but there's been nothing Does driving you Marcus to action. Marcus noticed that Ithamar's... You roll off. an inside check. I cast heroism on myself and Ithamar. No, okay. That doesn't do. Some bravery on you guys? Yeah. That's what Some... I was going to do, so you're good. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> At the same <laughs> thought as you did then. I'm becoming Marcus. <laughs> You and, should and double also, up on it. So you guys are twice. Your your heroism same time squared. Cast. Same time cast. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. Uh, what but, was that, Fewer? Um, as as a bit of extra caution, uh, I'll also cast the ability to see invisible without telling anybody. But if I see anything, I would I would you know make a decision from there. Okay. Uh, as you look around, Fewer, everything is, is as you would expect it to be. Right. 
And <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> nice. Uh, Ithamar, uh, you feel Your eyes light up and you see everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, there's nothing invisible in this space. Okay. I communicate um, that to the party and specifically to Ithamar. Just let him know that there's no unseen eyes, you know, looking at us. Uh, Ithamar, upon hearing that and feeling this warmth of heroism build within you, um, you settle in and you're reminded this is the Adventurers Guild. There's not a lot of nonsense that's tolerated in this particular building. It's almost a sanctuary. Mm -hmm. um, another way to look at it would be kind of like if you've seen John Wick, what the hotel is about, that's kind oh, yeah. of what this place is like. Okay. No um, safe. Is there not code permanent. That no one break? Really? Yes, that's someone <clears throat> intended to be that way. So upon all these things kind of transpiring, I, I kind of take a deep breath, sit down beside Maylor with just a newfound resolve and put, put my arm around his, pat his shoulder and just relax a little bit. The edge is off. Take Pick up the closest drink and, and take a sip. I'm gonna, you wear uh, water? Yeah, i leave it there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to go funny. around the table here and uh, make my way to Nova. and just Madam Nova, I'm very thankful to hear that you're alive and that you escaped that terrible situation. And with that, I'm um, you are intense to retreat to the room, wherever that is. Okay. I'll take you up there in a minute. Is anyone else following? I'll go with them. Full bellies. The moment I walk uh, through the door, I'm investigating the whole place. Make sure there's nobody hiding. Yeah, that's obviously what I would do as well. Okay, roll an investigation check. Uh, I will assist and, you, I think, Ithamar. You probably have a slightly better investigation than I do. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, your... My investigation is plus two. So you'll have advantage because I'm helping you. Okay. So we're I'll follow you yeah, kick it there and just try to offer more details about my, our encounter with Caledon just to try to help him okay. feel better about that. 18. No threats detected, Ithamar. Okay. Nova, as you're going through whatever additional details you can recall... You remember going to the Scribes Guild with this invitation. You recall that Maylor made uh, forgeries of it so all of you could show up at this private secret meeting at midnight at the Scribes Guild. As you walked into the Scribes Guild, several young acolytes were positioned there, ready to scribe. Uh, you had Caledon sitting on the opposite side of the Scribes Guild, giving an oration, teaching, and and commenting about his plans for uh, ridding Breckenfell and Fairmorn of this insipid disease of corruption. As you sat down, Caledon turned and noticed, you know, the party that you guys are. And that's when he dismissed everybody else except you three. And he confronted you directly. You recall that Catristia pushed and pressed and uh, did her very best to learn more information about her father, but Caledon either didn't know anything or he certainly wasn't open about sharing any additional details regarding her dad. Uh, you reiterate again, you know, Caledon's plan, his entire goals. Um, you share how the fight had escalated, uh, being that Caledon now deserves justice and you guys were doing your very best to kind of like move on and take this guy out before he destroys everything. Um, he did share that he has the looking glass, a thing that you guys have been holding back on. He was able to recover it. That's the impression he left you with. You didn't confirm whether or not it was Reginald's or not, but that's his story. He left you with the impression that that's the case. He also left you with the impression that Reginald had been captured and sent for re-education, whatever that might mean 
few air connecting some dots there, you've got at least a sense as to what that might imply or infer. Okay. Indeed. Uh, if you were, would be very interested if Nobu was uh, being so forthcoming with details to find out specifically how the battle, the confrontation went, and how it ended with the way that it did. How he's not dead, they're not dead. Okay. Uh, Do I remember that do I remember um, Maylor casting? Uh, Call the me calm. motions. Yeah. You do. You recall that. Uh, the yeah, fight so, had escalated. Go ahead. Continue. Yeah, I would just share with them that, you know, the fight had kind of escalated. We felt like we didn't have a choice, that we had to try to stop them from leaving us. And then uh, when it was apparent that we really wouldn't be able to overtake all of them. Maylor cast calm emotions, but it didn't work on us. It only worked on Caladon and the guards. So Caladon was trying to flee from me, and I didn't take kindly to him trying to walk away from our fight. Um, but that's why he... That's why we were really able to get away, is because Ma uh, Maylor had cast cast that calm emotions and Caladon had calmed down as he was leaving us. Was it by Caladon's hand that you fell? Oh, yes. Yes. Hmm. I look at Fruer and Marcus and I say, You want to see the scar? We... And I like show him my scar across my chest. Mm. Was, it look at was it magic or a weapon? He had a giant, giant, like, uh, glaive-looking weapon was one thing that he had. I don't know that the weapon wasn't magical, though. You wouldn't Go know. ahead, Mailer. I look at Marcus for a second. Can good people do bad things? Marcus would still be at the table if Cortricia was still sitting there. If she okay. left, then he would have left. With oh, them. I thought we were all back headed to the room well yeah we were he kind of just kept going i was waiting for everyone to kind of talk and know it yeah yeah if you were in nova there. having that conversation going up the steps yeah they were all going towards the room i didn't know if katrista was staying or not if she is then i was gonna go stayed. too but then everybody started talking so i was just like let them do their thing yeah, well, sorry i'm just making sure <laughs> then we'll yes yeah, well, we'll just, uh, yeah we're still for the table that's why not everyone moved is why it's like, mosey on over here we'll have that little conversation we fell into the theater of the mind and ignored yeah, the table. That's fine. <laughs> I, was letting, I was letting it go. Didn't want to interrupt it. So. so is everyone moving up to the room now? That's fine. Yeah. yeah. If everyone wasn't. May Lord. All right. The, I would just say that the capacity for evil is within all of us. We have to find. So you guys have moved up to the party, party suite here. Yeah. So. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, we all have to make that choice to not be evil. To but there's also the, good. I mean, a very dangerous person, though, is someone who thinks they're doing good and is actually doing evil. And it yeah. certainly sounds well, like that's what we are facing with Kaladon. I mean, the quickest way to see if something is evil is how, how focused on self is it and your own perspective and your own way of doing things, right? Are you being guided by something greater than you? Or are you, I mean, he thinks he is, but he's willing to destroy innocent lives. I mean, and he may still think he's doing good. Yeah. Is there an evil helm? Yeah. An evil thorn? There is a counter to all the good. An evil maestro? What? No, not, not, not evil, evil bird. A Look, counter god. There are evil. evil deities, yes. Uh, my fear is sometimes men try to strive to become like the gods. I think it's what happened many years ago.
So as the evening is coming to a close, what do you guys, is there anything you want to do before the evening ends? <laughs> um, <clears throat> I feel safe, friends, in the Adventurers Guild. However, I also understand that that may not be the sentiment of everyone. So I will offer, uh, I do have a protection, uh, an opportunity for protection for us. We have to be very tight, though. <laughs> it's only a ten foot, ten foot area of protection that we can use. No one can enter it. Otherwise, we can enjoy Officers. a comfy bed, which would be my preference, to be honest. Put it by the door. I'll sleep in it. Very well, Melo. I mean, nice. Technically, there is two doors here. There is Ooh. this door. And there is this door. How dare you? Marcus starts pushing the, <laughs> the couch in front of the other door. <laughs> Foiled my plan. Don't worry, I got you. I'll sleep over here. Don't worry. I'll sleep on this one. Middle Any, Don't worry. It, anyone that would like, we can uh, make room in here. And I'll, Comfy bed. Woo! Move to wherever sure. you want to go. Not sleep. I'll begin to channel and uh, cast Lehman's tiny hut. Around oh, this area, you okay. have to stay in it. <laughs> yeah, I won't be able to leave, so I'd I'd move a, uh, you know, a cushion or something to lay on. Sorry, get get whatever you need because you you wait. I believe you can come back in actually. If you leave, you can come in. Back you, in. I just can't. You, know, you right. just can't leave. Yeah. And I would form the the uh, interior to be comfortable, starry night, a uh, twilight setting, as it were. Um, very cozy though and peaceful. I go through my stuff and I remove all of my fake trappings of wealth, things that I did to make myself feel wealthy and pretend to be wealthy, and I set it aside and I repack my bag without it. Hmm. Nice. Marcus okay. would uh, just kind of knock on the girl's door before, like, as you know, before we're getting down, and, and it goes to. At the beginning of the evening, before it just wanted to talk to him for a minute. Do you, do you all have just a moment? Marcus, come on in! This is the jumpiest bed ever! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'll, I will take your word for it. Um, I, I just wanted to say, uh, no, but I'm sorry for what you had to go through. And Catrice, it had to be terrible to see your friend fall like that. I, I mean, I know I can be headstrong sometimes. I know I can go into battle some sometimes seemingly carelessly. And I don't ever want to assume you guys aren't doing what you think is right. I'm sorry for my assumptions before. He's a terrible man. And he will pay for what he's done to you. And what he, what he plans to do to others. Just know my well, life. I... I will give my life to that cause. I hope it doesn't come to that. But I appreciate your sharing this with us. I thought I was strong, Marcus. I'm but I'm not as strong. You are all as very all strong. No. No. Maybe all of yet. us together. But he's Form will bring us strength. My st Well. Our gods will bring us strength. <laughs> I think they're working for the same cause, it seems like, bringing us together. And Except for Caladon's god. Who does he worship? Dirk. don't know. I mean, this hammer that was given was found is from a Thander, who is definitely a good god. I mean, he's, he's one of the leaders of, of the, the good path pantheons. I mean, wasn't it Old Thander's power that defeated Bryce's Kadeem? Initially, originally, yes. With the help, I mean, I mean, he empowered <coughs> Istabal. I mean, I don't know. There's, there's a lot more going on here than we first found out. So, I. It's late. I want you all to be able to get a good night's sleep. I just wanted to say that, and just needed to let you know. So, thank you for finding out the truth, so we can act on it. Thank you, Marcus. Good night, Marcus. Thank you. Marcus, as you walk away, I want you to roll an inside check. Good 
good at too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And as you walk away, you feel very comfortable with how things have gone throughout the evening. Um, you know pretty pretty well that Torm is going to protect you and guide you, and you give no additional thought or care for the evening. Uh, you feel ready to just capture an evening of rest. Okay. Ithamar, what are you doing? I've um, obviously just calmed way down, but <clears throat> I'm kind of hanging out over here with Maylor and um, and Fuair. Um, not not out of just my sense of um, unease or whatever, but just that I would naturally do something like this in an unfamiliar place. I was just I was just as fine being in the room that I had stayed in before. And this is a very wide open space, and I don't <laughs> like that. A lot of a lot of nooks and crannies, corners, rooms. I, I know it's safe, but this is just a force of habit that I'm just. I don't want to be uh, taken unawares. So. So Marcus is by himself right now. What's your level of confidence that he's going to be okay? And he's going to be able to protect that side of the room. Thank well, he, he's a he's a friend of a friend of Helm, so he should be all right, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's right. Fair enough. We no, found I'm out confident. who the friend of the friend is. Man. Yeah, <laughs> he figured out who the friend of the friend was. But I, that's that's a great question, and I will say this: um, he was back there talking to the ladies, and he comes out, and I see him over there. So I will ease over there, knowing that. Um, there would be few air and Maylor at this end and me and Marcus at the other end. Okay. If uh, if we were to end we, the night we right there. We both won't fit on this couch. <laughs> I've got it. It's okay. Rest, my friend. I just I just wink at him like you're in my spot. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. <clears throat> As uh you are sees Maylord taking all this stuff out of his bag and kind of just, I don't know, thinking about that. He's just going to ask him, uh, Maylor, would you would you mind playing something as we rest? <laughs> that haunting tune. <laughs> the almost heroes. <laughs> the almost heroes. Yeah, that, he just keeps playing the same tune over and over again. <laughs> I do pull out my loot and I play the song of rest. Okay. If you are, remember, you can dim the lights, create the ambient temperature. What type of mood are you creating inside your tiny hut? Yeah, so that's kind of what I was saying earlier is that I'm presenting it in a twilight, you know, kind of uh, starry night. Out, outside is completely opaque. You can't really see inside, but inside it's, it's like... Uh, just a very nice twilight evening, lit slightly dim, like barely, but uh, very peaceful, comfortable. Okay. The song shifts back and forth between death and rebirth themes, back and forth. I keep playing long after everybody's gone to sleep, and I won't take more than a short rest tonight because I'll be restless the whole night, and I'll play long into the night, hours past when everybody goes to sleep. Maylor, you continue to strum. A song of rest, beautiful tone of wonderful melody, has its somber moments in it. And in that somber moment, you hear that voice that you heard just a few nights ago. Maylor. Maylor. Hank. Hmm. Yes. You know that's not my full name. But you pronounce your full name. <laughs> <laughs> if you can, you wouldn't know it in your own tongue anyway. How have you been enjoying <clears throat> my power? I'm not sure it's strong enough. No. Not yet. Why don't you give up your petty instruments and draw more of my power. 
I stop playing and set my instrument down. I put it with Why? the pile of clothes. Why play songs when you could have the power of rebirth inside you? I silently nod as I kind of set my instrument down. I wish to be reborn. Don't forget. You help me. I'll help you. Hmm. Yeah. Good. Help me keep my friends safe. I feel like the ornament that I have is slightly aflame and within my hand at the same mm. time. As you have pulled out the ornament, it does sit in your hand and you feel the warmth of it in a way that you haven't felt yet since acquiring it. Close slightly. Orange and yellow. It's not hot to the touch. It's almost comforting. Kind of like a heating pad, if you will. Pick it up, you can place it to your cheek, you feel the warmth against your flesh. But it doesn't burn you. Give up on the old ways, will you? I... I had tea. You had tea? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well... One day, when... I'm close enough... Perhaps you will find my egg. And I will be reborn. And there this evil can be dealt with and burned away in my flames. We'll protect this city together. We'll protect Fairmorn and the mortal realm. Good night, my friend. My apprentice. What Rest the heck? heck?